Hello everybody, UFC 282 is literally right around the corner, and considering what's went wrong with it, looks to be a pretty interesting card. You've got some fun fights, there's a title build on the line that should be interesting, Jan Blackowitz, Magomed Ankalaev, both interesting fighters. You've got a few prove it guys on the prelim, a few interesting fighters that could be something on the early prelims. You've got an 18 year old for some reason fighting. Oh, all in all, UFC 282 has a lot of potential to be interesting. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, I do want to clarify that I can't verify the validity of what I'm about to tell you all. There's been a bunch of canceled fights on this card. Uh, Cameron Simon's original opponent was canceled. He's now fighting Stephen Koslow. That's the version I went with. Ovint St. Priu, his two of his fights have been canceled. So at this point, I don't even think uh, Antonio, I don't even think he's fighting on this card. Um, Ronnie Lawler, I believe, canceled. I think he's out. I'm going to do the best I can, but at the time of writing, I don't have all the answers. But starting us off with the always fun early prelims. 6-0, Cameron Simon comes off a Contender Series win against 6-0, Stephen Obi-Wan Shinobi, or The Pillow, Kozlo. Kozlo is four years older and two inches shorter. I got no idea about reach. Now, Simon's new to the UFC and seems like a finisher who likes hanging on the feet with four KO, TKO wins. Does seem to have some sort of ground game with a single submission win, but that doesn't tell me much. In his contender series win, he took a dominant striking lead and put away his opponent in a third. kozlo has got six submission wins, so I'm willing to guess he's a grappler. And Based on the fact he trains jiu-jitsu, I'll assume he can play from any position. I got nothing on him. Here, I'm going to default to Vegas odds. I'm going to run with Simon. This fight feels closer than I believe these odds show. And based on what I could see, Simon looks to be able to outclass Kozlo on the feet. And if he's able to keep it up or at least have a good takedown defense, I think he can win this fight. 14-4, Vinicius Salvador looks to start off a UFC run against 11-4, Daniel Miojo da Silva. One inch of height goes to Salvador, and once again, don't know about reach because it doesn't get listed on UFC stats. Uh, Salvador is also coming off a contender series win and is a striker that seems with Salvador is also coming off a contender series win and also seems to be a striker. 13 TKO KO wins. Uh, striking percentages are really high in both regards. 8.43, 7.15. Really running with that killer be killed mentality, though it seems like the power isn't always the finishing blow. Sometimes it seems to be quantity. Uh, De Silva is on a three-fight losing streak where he's been finished each time. He seems to be a ground-focused fighter. Six career submission wins. In the UFC, he's only put up one actual takedown and has a high of 33 seconds of ground control. Uh, once again, I'm going with Vegas here. Salvador's my pick. Mostly based on how De Silva has been ineffective with his ground game. And it seems like Salvador should be able to do, do decent here. He should be able to keep it where he wants it to be. He should be able to survive and get the win. 16-9, TJ, Downtown Brown, looks to rebound against 9-1, Eric the King Silva. Brown is three years younger, one is shorter, and once again, I don't know about reach. Brown's 500 in the UFC, but he's been remarkably consistent in terms of going the distance, only two of his six fights finishing before that final bell. Striking is not great, but it's effective enough with a 3.68 3 to a 2.88. He does tend to be heavy on the takedowns when he wins, and Cannon will hold him for as long as he can. Silva is a new fighter coming off a contender series win, which is a running theme on this goddamn card, where he threw 12 punches and got one takedown and KO'd his opponent. 1 minute 32 into the first. Outside the UFC, he's been a majority of a finisher, four submission, and three KO, TKO wins. Not a whole lot to say here. And Vegas screws me here having it at minus 112 to minus 108, but I am going to run with Brown here. I think Silva has a definite shot, and I think he's a 100% a safe bet if I were gambling money on this. But I like the cage experience that Brown has in the UFC, so I'm going to go with that over Silva's potential, if you will. This would be St. Peru versus Tricoli, but I believe this fight's canceled. I don't think either fighter is facing. So we're ending off the early prelims with a 16-4 Billy Corintio trying to get back on track against the 13-5 Alexander the Great Ape Hernandez. Hernandez is four years younger, one is shorter, but does actually take two in reach because I have those measurements now. Corintio is a high-octane striker who pours on the quantity throughout the fight. 774 landed to a 580 absorbed. Jesus. Oftentimes his fights do go into the third round, but he seems to be able to keep that pressure up all throughout the fight. His KO power is there, and it is definitely a threat, and that's not to mention the presence of a takedown game that he has been able to use to a solid effect. Though it's not exactly what I believe you write home about here. Hernandez is different, and by that it's in a few weird ways. 
One is that he tends to win by TKO finish, and his totals are a 3.97 to 3.94. So he definitely doesn't take a striking lead. He hangs about even and relies on his power. He also has proven more susceptible to getting finished, judging by the dead, almost dead even totals. He doesn't tend to go the full three rounds, which is a little weird in all honesty, but it's not that important. And he also has been a bit more effective takedown game, though I've noticed he does not do submissions. Vegas likes Corintio. I'm going to agree. This is very tentative for me, but I like the quantity that Corintio can put out. And while Hernandez has that power and he has, has proven toughness, I don't know how important strikes are going to be in this. I don't know how important the ground game is going to be in general. But I like the ability to have that high quantity landed and a lower absorb compared to the lower landed and the lower absorb. 397, 394, you're a power puncher. But if your power doesn't land, you're outclassed. Obviously, if he gets the power, he has it. But I like Corintio 774 and 580 versus the 397, 394. And thank God we're finally to the prelims. <laughs> The, the early prelims aren't awful on this card, but it is almost entirely contender series, guys, which for me is a pain to write for because I have no information. And quite frankly, it's hard to talk about guys whose entire experience is outside the UFC, fighting people who haven't fought in the UFC. It's hard to give, a I feel, a fair comparison when they're fighting guys who have had four or five UFC fights at that point. But 29 and 9, Chris Action Man Curtis tries to rebound against the 15 and 5. Joaquin Numansa Buckley. Buckley is seven years younger, two inches shorter, does take an inch in reach though. Now Curtis has been a swang and bang fighter so far. A 6-0 landed to a 6-3-9 absorbed. He seems to have power and endurance in spades, at least in the sample size I have. Additionally, he has a very solid takedown defense, which is important since it seems like the ground game is not his thing. Buckley is similar, 3.61, 3.42, but nearly all but one of his UFC wins came by finish. He also seemed to struggle with the takedown defense a little more than Curtis, but that being said, he also seems to be a very dynamic striker. Vegas likes Buckley here. And very tentatively, and probably because Ohio bias, I'm going to disagree and pick Curtis. I am basing this slightly on the fact that he seems to excel at those swing and bang fights, additionally into pulling them into the later rounds. Can Buckley win this? 100%. But I'm going to hedge my bets here with Curtis, just based on a feeling. 11 and 3, Edmund, the golden boy, I'm so sorry, Shahabazan, <sighs> tries to get something going. It's 11 and 5, Dolce, champion, Lungiambula. I am so sorry. 10 years of age favor Edmund, who's also 4 inches taller. Maybe more because UFC stats differ from Sherdog, but he definitely loses 2 in reach. Edmund is coming off three straight losses and does rack a 3-2-4 to 4 one 3 striking percentage. Very much comes across the killer be killed kind of guy with six of his UFC fights ending in finishes. Also seems to be a fairly dynamic strider with the sort of strikes he actively throws. Does also rock a 2-7-1 takedown average and has gotten a submission win, so it seems like a consistent threat. Dalka is a similar fighter, rocking a 3-1-8 to a 3-6-6, though it does seem like power isn't as consistent for him, being more that grinder. He does tend to get more takedowns in his fights, but he does have limited returns off of those takedowns. Vegas likes Edmund here, and I'm going to agree. I think we've seen from him a little more of the power, and he's made it to the third against some decently high competition, which we just haven't seen from Dolka. And this fight, 6-0, Raul, Raul, I don't know. El Nino Problema, Rosas Jr., tries to keep his O against the 10-6, J, the Joker, Perrin, or Perrin. Rosas is 11 years younger, as in 18 versus 29. They're either the same height or Rosas is too higher, because once again, Sherdog and UFC stats are different, and reach their about even. Rosas will be going into his first UFC fight off a contender series win in September. Uh, that being said, he seems like a ground-heavy fighter with a focus on submission, four career finishes that way, and the ability to control an opponent consistently on top. Perrin, on the other hand, has not won in the UFC, but outside the UFC, seems like a ground-focused grinder and finisher with four submission and decision wins. However, the majority of his losses also come by decision. Vegas likes Roses here, and I want to agree. I don't want to pick the 18-year-old, but I think Perrin's threat is that he's a ground-focused fighter, and the issue is that's Rosas' wheelhouse entirely, and he looks to be very good at it. Could Perrin win? Yes. I'm going to hedge my bets and follow Vegas here and pick Rosas, because I feel like this fight goes to the ground. 
Perrin might go and keep it on the feet. In that case, I think it tilts him. But right here, right now, I'm going to say Rosas as much as I don't want to pick an 18-year-old to win this fight. But ending off our early prelims, I think UFC has the order different on their website again. 12 and 4, Jazahino, Biggie Boy Rosenstrick aims for a rebound against the 12 and 5, Chris Dawkins. One year in age for Dawkins and two inches in reach for Rosenstrick. Rosenstrick is an incredibly talented striker despite his 280 to 3.24 at percentages. Now, part of that is the whole heavyweight issue where close totals are the norm and how it really only takes one shot to end a fight. I know it's true in every division, but it's especially true in the heavyweight division. He is a very dynamic striker, and he knows how to work leg kicks and range, and it is worth stating his UFC all losses all came from contenders. Dawkins rocks a 6.47 to 402 landed, and it is worth noting that he seems to rely on speed in order to outpace his opponents. I saw his Derek Lewis fight, and I was able to see his uh, Curtis fight live. When he gets caught by people that can get him with power, it's dead man walking. Derek Lewis powered through his guard and put him away, and uh, Curtis Blades is able to get him and put him down. Neither fighter really is a takedown game here, though, so it's not worth mentioning. Rosa Struick is the favorite, and I'm going to agree. I think he has the more dynamic striking. I think he has the range. I think he has the speed to hang in there against Dawkins, while also getting it going with the power. Now, starting off our main card. 15-0, or 15-1 for some reason, Bryce Thug Nasty Mitchell takes on 12-0. Ilya, El Matador, Tapuria. Tapuria is two years younger, three or one inch shorter because they can't get their shit together, and an inch in reach going to Mitchell. Mitchell is a grinder through and through, 2.28 landed to 1.39 absorbed, showing the grinding standard striking percentage where he can hang in, but it's not the reason he wins the fight. His takedown game is where it's all at with 3.40 average, and with him, it rains, it pours. He's able to rack up takedown after takedown and just tires opponents out and rack up the control time. Additionally, he has a consistent submission threat as well as a twister submission, which is just impressive. Tapuria is a, bird, is a very different bird with a low striking percentage, 287 to a 2.28, but much more power with his punches to put people down. Three of his four UFC fights ending with punch and punches TKOs. He also does tend to use takedowns, so they are rather infrequent, but effective when they are used. Now, I think Mitchell's a definite threat, and Vegas does like Tapuria. This is a close one for me. I am going to go with Tapuria. I think his takedown defense will be able to keep him alive enough, and he's proven to have some ability on the ground to keep himself alive or succeed. And he does technically throw out more submissions on average than Mitchell, but if he can survive on the ground, I think he'll thrive on the feet versus somebody whose main thing is hanging in there and not having really the power to back it up. 18-4-1, Darren the Gorilla Till tries to rebound against the surging. 17-2, Driscus still knocks Duplessis. One year in age for Duplessis, either dead even or an inch in height, as well as two in reach. Tills is a weird case as a fighter. He's a bit of a grinder, doesn't really play around with the ground game. Rocks a striking percentage of 2.26 landed, 3.02 absorbed, and shockingly, doesn't seem to have all that much power behind it. And recently, he also seems to have been outgrappled and outstruck by his last two opponents. Duplessis does have a much smaller sample size, but does rock a 655 to 423 while showing some power in his earlier fights, i.e. 2020 and 2021. He also has shown some takedown and ground game while also rocking a nice 100% takedown defense. Favorites Duplessis, I'm going to agree. I know it's boring, but Till struggled a lot in his recent fight, and with a battle on the feet, I don't like the striking differential here. I like Duplessis' striking differential, I think his power shows up more, and while Till could win, I'm going to pick Duplessis here. This is where Lawler Ponzanibio would be. I don't know if Santiago has a, Santiago Ponzanibio has a new opponent, but yeah. The surprise co-main event, because a lot's gone wrong in this card. 19-3, Patty the Batty Pimblet sips up to bat against 19-5, Jared Flash Gordon. Patty is seven years younger and an inch taller and steals five in reach. Jesus. Pimblet's a pretty well-rounded fighter who guns for the finish in his fights. 4.19 to 3.0 striking. Uh, six career KO wins, one in the UFC, does tend to step up in striking leads in most of his UFC fights, hasn't really seen him be a dead even striker. Takedowns and submission games are also dangerous with how he's able to get the submission of single takedowns with a 1.88 average or just survive other fighters takedowns. Gordon numbers wise is pretty similar, 5.53, 3.11, does tend to dominate the total strikes. But he doesn't really get the KO finish, at least in the UFC. It's the same with the takedown game. Doesn't really result in submissions, but instead control time and just straight up points. He has been suppressed by better ground fighters and KO'd by other fighters as well. Vegas likes the baddie and it's boring, but I'm going to agree. 
Could Gordon win? Yes. Do I see a viable way for him to win? Yes. But I think Patty has the momentum. I think Patty, the way he fights, is not the antithesis to Gordon, but I think it's a way that's going to put pressure on Gordon and force him into the corner wall, having to deal with Patty's takedown game. And Gordon has lost to people with consistent takedown games before. And for the surprise main event, former champion, 29-9, and nine, Jan Blakowicz, takes on the hopeful future champ, 17-1, Magomed Ankalaev. Ankalaev is nine years younger at 30, an inch, one inch taller, but does lose three in reach. Now, Blakowicz is someone we've talked about before on this, and he's a decently rounded fighter, I want to say. Rocks a 3.55 lander to a 2.77 absorbed, and has a heavy dose of power to back it up. And even without that power, he's got the ability to outstrike his opponents and lead the points. Additionally, we've seen him shoot takedowns when needed, and the power to control top as well. That being said, he has been outclassed by other, other ground-based fighters and grapplers in the UFC. However, it also seems to be a strategy thing over him. It's not so much his consistent game plan. I don't imagine it coming into play here. Ankalaev is different in a few key ways. Numbers-wise, rocks a 3-6-4 to 2-1-4, but even in decision finishes, he tends to have a lower striking total than Blackowitz. That does have to do with his slightly higher takedown percentage and the fact he wins rounds of his, he wins f rounds with his takedowns. His striking is also a little more varied than what we've seen from Jan. Vegas likes Ankalev, and in my script, I've left this blank because I don't know. In my mind, I want to pick Blackowitz because I've seen him at this level four. I've seen him succeed in great fighters, but I can't deny that Ankalev is incredibly talented, incredibly skilled. Sitting here reading this and recording this, I'm going to go with Blackowitz. It's probably favoritism. But from Blackowitz, we've seen him at this level. We've seen him deploy his wrestling to great effect. He's proven he has the power, and he's proven he has general durability to make it fights. Ankalaev can easily win this. I will not deny that in the slightest. But the power I've seen Jan Blackowitz have... I think could be a deciding factor in this fight because I think he's more than able probably to hang in with the striking and if he prevents Ankalaev from getting that shot to put him away and is able to deal with the takedowns to deal with the wrestling I think he could win this fight that being said that was UFC 282 those are my predictions hopefully I get them all right I went about 9 for 12 on the last card I believe Thank you all for watching. I will see you next fight, and we'll probably discuss more and more what I got wrong and what I got right about this card. Thank you for watching.